Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Economics course. And today we're going to be looking at fiscal policy. What is fiscal policy? Fiscal policy is the use of government spending and taxation in order to manipulate changes in aggregate demand in order to meet macroeconomic objectives set by a government. It can either be expansionary or contractionary. Expansionary fiscal policy is where we want an increase in aggregate demand. This involves more government spending and less taxation. Contractionary fiscal policy is a fall in aggregate demand. Here we'll have more cuts and more taxes, which is otherwise known as austerity. Government spending. There are two types of government spending which we're going to use in order to try and manipulate aggregate demand. The first of which is current spending. This is the spending of money on pensions and benefits in the economy. This will increase the discretionary income of households, which is going to increase spending levels, and therefore we're going to see a rise in aggregate demand, since spending is a component of aggregate demand. Capital spending is the spending of funds and infrastructure um, from the government. More infrastructure is going to increase factor mobility, which pretty much means that it's a lot easier for people to get to work. So with an increase in factor mobility, more people are going to be able to contribute to the economy, which is going to increase our aggregate demand and the amount of goods and services which are going to be produced domestically. Now we're going to look at taxation. Taxation are the charges imposed by the government onto firms and households for purchasing or for producing goods. If there is more taxation in the form of income tax, people will have less discretionary income which they can use in order to spend on the economy. This will mean that aggregate demand levels are going to decrease. Now we're going to look at the advantages and the disadvantages of using fiscal policy in order to try and manipulate levels of aggregate demand in order to meet macroeconomic objectives. With current spending, if we have more current spending, we are going to see increases in our GDP. However, an increase in current spending in the form of pensions and benefits may give a disincentive for people to work as um, they're going to be given extra wages and extra um, income effectively and they're not going to see the point in working if they're going to be given these extra income. So as a result that is going to reduce output. Also, this may not work in the long run as perhaps if the economic climate changes and we experience an uh, increase in interest rates or inflation, people may want to save their money um, as a result of it and this is just going to be wasted money because it's not going to be spent. However, it can reduce crime if people are going to be given uh, more income and it's going to fix economic um, income inequality, we're going to see that people aren't going to resort to crime in order to solve that. However, a problem though is that this increase in aggregate demand is going to cause inflation. And also giving and spending money on people in the form of benefits and taxation is going to cost the government money, which they could be using in order to try and improve infrastructure, for example. Speaking of infrastructure, we're going to now look at increase in capital spending and its advantages and disadvantages. The obvious uh, advantage is that it's going to increase GDP. However, it can cause inflation also, just like that of current spending. It does reduce employment, however, because we're going to see an increase in factor mobility. It may also reduce crime since we are employing more people, which is going to make them have income for themselves, which is going to um, reduce the levels of income inequality. And because more people are going to be employed with jobs, they're not going to have to resort to crime in the day to day lives. However, the advantage of this is that it does cost money, which can be in effect. Uh, this is not a very effective scheme at all if this a spending of the money on infrastructure isn't going to uh, improve anything to a great extent that much. Now we're looking at the pros and cons of the taxation on a macro economy. The big advantage is that it doesn't cost money, which um, government spending does. However, it does reduce the GDP, which is a big problem because that can't then be used to invest in other areas, which will then improve the economy by increasing levels of aggregate demand. Also, it gives a disincentive to work if it's lowered. If we lower levels of taxation, people are just going to have this extra income and they're not going to see the point of working much harder to make more money if they have this um, extra income for themselves. Here are some questions on fiscal policy. 
have a go at answering these on another sheet of paper by pausing the video and then hit play whenever you're ready to see the answers. Here are the answers. If you got all of these right, congratulations. I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which will be the final lesson in our macroeconomic section of economics, which will be on supply side policies. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.